Hey, Snackers. Have you ever felt overwhelmed managing multiple APIs from a security, interoperability, or even an ease of use perspective? In Snack Minute episode 47, Matt and Kareem welcome back Vjoy, VP of Emerging Technology and Incubation, to discuss issues for developers today and how Cisco's open source tool, API Clarity, works to solve them. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Hey, everyone. Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 47 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your 10-minute all-things DevNet where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff that we think you'd like to know. And today, the cool thing we're going to talk to you about with our uh, special guest and returning guest, Vjoy, is some cool announcement that we've done. Vijoy, uh, do you mind introducing yourself? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Kareem and Matt. A pleasure to be here. Uh, I am the VP of Emerging Tech and Incubations at Cisco. I run this really, really special and cool group inside of Cisco, ETNI, as it's lovingly called. And the whole purpose here is to build a few bold bets for Cisco and take <laughs> Cisco into spaces that we are uncomfortable with. And that is the whole challenge. We, like I like to say, we run aggressive, we run fast, and we run hungry. Uh, you're you're speaking the truth there, Vijoy. Uh, since the last time uh, we saw you, a lot has has kind of changed over the landscape within Cisco, especially with uh, emerging technologies and incubations. Um, and I, I hear there were a few announcements at KubeCon last month. Uh, can you give us some insight into uh, what we talked about, and um, or at least the audience, what we talked about? and uh, what we can expect going forward. Sure, so let's start with the KubeCon announcement. It was around API Clarity. And mm -hmm. this is a shameless plug, go to apiclarity.io. That's where you can uh, learn more about it and play with it and nurture it and grow it and be participant in that community. It's a pretty cool project, but before I get there, do you guys know about Marvin at all? It's from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm very aware. Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. So Marvin, he's a paranoid android, and he is the smartest robot ever built. But he was built with general, genuine people personality or GPP tech. And the whole, the whole deal here is that he has been given all kinds of human emotions, but he's 50,000 times smarter than any human being with human emotions. <laughs> so as you can imagine, if he's always paranoid with the state of affairs around him. He's also perennially depressed because he, yes. <laughs> he's, he looks at everything around him and he's like, man, this is not going anywhere. That's the state that we think that's the state with API security today in the world. So if you go around, Marvin did this whole uh, survey and he went around talking to developers and SREs and he also talked to the security folks, CISOs and, and SREs on the SecOps side, and he asked them a few simple questions. It's like, if you think about, if you talk to your developers and you know that they are pulling APIs from all over the place, uh, are you aware of all the APIs sitting in your internal environment? Are you aware of all the third-party APIs that your developers are using? Are you comfortable with the state of security <laughs> of those APIs? Are you sure that none of those APIs are either deprecated or not documented and are still being used? Do they have terrible uptime? And then don't just think about one app, think about the thousands of apps and the tens of thousands of APIs that are sitting in an environment. And listening to all the answers, Marvin, as you can imagine, was extremely <laughs> depressed, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, Vijoy, while while you were describing Marvin, I thought you were describing Matt DiNapoli, but you know that's uh, that's a, a different conversation. <laughs> oh no! I so uh, you know, Snackers, we did a, a demo of API Clarity in a previous episode. I was not necessarily approaching it from a depressed state. I was just saying, hey, there are all these things that we need to be considerate of now as we talk about microservices and in, in uh, portions of applications interacting with each other. 
But now that I think about it, I am getting a little depressed. It, it is a little bit overwhelming, for sure. <laughs> That's great, Vijoy. Tell us a little bit about why is API security so relevant today? Yeah, and I think uh, a little bit of that, I mean, I think as I, as I was mentioning through Marvin, our friend Marvin here, but if you think about a developer and if you think about the pressures on that developer, and we at Cisco like to say the application experience is the new brand. And when you think about the application experience, is not just the latencies or the performance of the app, is the is the feature velocity. If 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 one banking app versus the other app banking app, uh, if there are better features and better availability on one versus the other, people will flock to that first app. And so, if you think about the brand perception, it's all about the application experience, uh, velocity, trust, security, performance, all of those things. And so who's holding all of that together is the developer. And so the developer really needs to move quickly and get those features out with security and trust in mind and performance and availability in mind. And so in that kind of environment and in a cloud native world, they're picking and choosing all of these APIs from all across the globe. So these APIs are sitting in SaaS providers and public cloud providers internal in basically an edge location on your mobile app. So if these APIs are sitting all across the wide open internet, what is security perimeter in this kind of a construct? There is no security perimeter. There is a soft construct around an API. So you need to secure API to API calls. And there is a soft construct around data objects. So you need to secure API to data object interactions. And so if you can think about this, it's no wonder that APIs are meant or destined to be the biggest vector of breaches going forward. And API security becomes front and center to, to all of this. So API clarity to us is actually just one prong in the puzzle where we want to bring the community along and say that let's start figuring out with, let's start with visibility. And let's start with a frictionless way of figuring out whether your APIs are secure, have good uptime, are zombies or, or shadows, and just start building out that open API spec. And, and let's start there. Because once you have that specification, then you can talk about things like drift. Then you can talk about things like, are we compliant or are we geofenced and, and stuff like that. So the first step, as with anything, is visibility. And API clarity, for sure, is the visibility part. And API security is everything else that you build around it once you have that visibility. It's interesting to start to think about um, really the use cases around APIs. Like we talk about it and we tout them and we and we talk about it from an operations perspective because of you know the space that Cisco lives in. But as you start to think about um, sharing health records or uh, financial data or all of those other things that APIs can can tie to that are um, you know sensitive data to an individual to an organization, um, you can quickly see that there are multiple layers for devs to have to worry about for API security. Um, aside from any of the ones that you mentioned, is there anything else that, that maybe um, the community might need to start to think about from uh, an implementation perspective in either using APIs or tying in cloud native um, applications uh, to that API usage? I think the, the problem is that the space is so broad. I mean, you can, APIs are the way you interact uh, with, mm -hmm. with an application. And so how those APIs are constructed, uh, again, they could be leveraged from third-party sources or they could be built internally. And when you build them internally, and even if you're leveraging a third-party one, somebody has built that for you. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the technologies that are being used below that API are very diverse and varied. So you can have like monolithic apps exposing a bunch of APIs. Or you can have a Lambda exposing a singular API and <laughs> everything in between. And so just the heterogeneity of how these things are being built and being brought out is a complexity that is very difficult to manage. And layer on top of that, the, the need for, like I said, compliance and GDPR and geofencing, I mean, it just becomes complicated as hell. So 
Again, starting with visibility, but then I'm getting, getting on. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So it, it's it's a tough problem to solve, but it's a very pertinent problem. To solve. And and it sounds like we're 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 aware of the problem and we're working towards solving it and we're engaging the community to allow us allow them to essentially pitch in on all of that with API clarity. And it's clearly that you're super passionate about it, Vjoy. Um, that said, um, because you got me excited, how can I play with all the stuff? What what can I do? Where can I get my hands on? Are there demos out there? Tell me about it, please. Sure. Uh, glad that you're excited and glad, uh, and I'm hoping <laughs> Yeah, listeners get excited as well. Uh, it's it's a nascent space, so there is enough to come in and drive impact around. Uh, so so getting involved now is is just the right time, I would say. Uh, it's not a mature space that you are fighting for relevance in terms of impact. So come and join the community. Like I said, apiclarity.io is your one-stop shop for everything that is in open source in the community. You can you can get to the GitHub uh, repo as well. You can look at documentation. There has been a CNCF webinar around this uh, that we published, I think, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. So you can you can take a look at that. There has been the the keynote that I gave at KubeCon. You can start there. That's a quick rundown and a five minute nugget of, of what you can do there. Also, if you want to take it further and want to try it out as a product and look at policies and geofencing and security beyond just the visibility pieces, uh, you can go to eti.cisco.com. We have secure CN. That is something that we are trialing out, so you can try it. And if you're interested, we can go through our buying motion as well, but you can try it free and you can give us feedback. <laughs> as so many, many ways of, of participating in this. And um, I do have to note uh, to those who are out there watching, and maybe uh, their interest is a little peaked, I did get to play around with API Clarity a little bit. And one of the um, interesting things on top of uh, the visibility into the API layer that we can expect to see is the ability for API Clarity to actually reverse engineer documentation from the APIs that it does find. Right. And that's a really exciting thing for those of us that might be a little bit lazy about documenting uh, their implementations. Um, and so it gives us the ability not just to um, see how our external services are affecting our application, but how our internal services are interacting with each other as well. Um, so that's a super exciting addition to the API Clarity on top of that security layer that, that's giving us that visibility into it. So just wanted to mention that because that was one thing I was uh, pumped about. <laughs> that, that is super awesome. And I think, uh, Matt, to your point, there is the documentation bit, the fact that you can do fuzz testing around APIs. I mean, once you have the specification, and like I was saying earlier, developers just want to run fast. Who mm -hmm. loves documentation? Nobody. But it's a, it's, no. <laughs> a, it's a needed aspect of life. And so this is the, here is this tool, like you said, which will help you document all of your APIs. What's bad about it? Just get involved and use it. So yeah. please come in and participate. If that's what gets your foot in the door and then you realize all the other benefits, you know, that's the exciting piece for it. Um, Vijoy, uh, unfortunately, we are at time um, and we really appreciate you coming. Uh, since you're a return guest, we already asked you what your superpower would be, but uh, maybe you've come up with another one. Uh, not to necessarily put you on the spot here, but it, we, Kareem and I were kind of toying with return guests uh, answering in a, a second time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say I would not want to be as depressed as Marvin is or as Matt <laughs> probably is. I, think, so, you're, so I think you're already working towards that. Yeah, so. <laughs> so as long as API Clarity helps you, awesome. All awesome. Right, that sounds great. <laughs> well, uh, thank you again for joining us and, and uh, talking about API Clarity. Uh, thank you, Snackers, for uh, joining us again on another episode. Um, come check us out next time where we talk about another cool uh, API encoding topic. Thank you, Snackers. Thank you, Vijoy. Thank you. Thank you.